Hello, my beautiful AP Computer Science students. Welcome to our lesson today, where we are going to be starting Unit 7 and in getting into an array list and what an array list is and all of the great things we can do with an array list. Um, today's lesson is just an introduction into an array list as far as what it is, how we use it, and we're just going to cover up to creation today. So just how to create it um, and what it looks like in in the code. So let's go ahead and get into it. So obviously the first question we have to answer here is what exactly is an array list? And we know we use arrays to store a list of data, right? That was our entire last unit. We used arrays to store a list of data. And while we were able to do a lot with arrays, um, they did come with some drawbacks, specifically two big drawbacks. One is that they are fixed in size. So when we created it, we had to specify a size and we could not change that size. If we did want to change the size, we had to create a whole new array, copy everything over, shift elements. It was kind of a big mess if we wanted to um, uh, resize it somehow. So that was one drawback. The second one is that you can't add or remove items easily. You can do it with an algorithm when we went over we went over how to do that. Um, again, it involved creating a new array, copying contents over, shifting. It just wasn't very easy. So those were the two big drawbacks of an array, which is a built-in way to store data. So that's where ArrayList comes in. It was created basically to overcome these two big obstacles. Um, and ArrayList provides a different way of storing a list of data, and it fixes basically those two big drawbacks. An ArrayList can grow and shrink as needed in a program, and you can add or remove elements with a single statement. And because of those two big um, features, sometimes it might make more sense to store data as an array list. Okay. So or how do we use it? Okay, It's not a built-in data type like array. Okay. Array we were able to use without any import statements because it was built into the language. Array list is not like that. Array list is a separate class that we have to import. It's in the collections API, which is the library that's provided by, by Java. It's in the util package, so we're going to have to have an import statement importing the util package. Now here's where we're going to get a little bit beyond the course here. Um, ArrayList is part of what we call the list interface. And interfaces are no longer covered on the AP CSA exam. They used to be, but they are not any longer. So here's just a little brief thing about an interface that you need to know. An interface is basically like a contract that lists out a set of methods that a class must implement if it implements the interface. Okay, So in other words, ArrayList says, yes, I'm going to use this contract, which is an interface. I'm going to use this contract. And all of the methods listed in this contract, ArrayList is going to provide an implementation for. And the reason we have that is those methods that ArrayList uses are going to help us modify the contents of the ArrayList. And we want to be able to modify the contents of the ArrayList easily. That was one of the benefits of an ArrayList over an Array is that we can easily modify contents here. So we want that interface, we want that contract implementing all of those known methods. Okay, List interface is part of Again, the collections API, the collections framework, which defines common behavior and operations that any type of list structure should have. Um, these are the most popular types of list structures. And all of these are part of the collections API. They are all different ways of containing a list, a list of data. We have, of course, ArrayList, which we're talking about. LinkList is probably the next most popular you'll hear about. But there's also vector stack, copy on write, ArrayList, abstract list. All of these implement list. Um, each of these, again, they all store data, okay? All store data somehow, um, but they all store it in the somewhat of a different way. So which one you use to store your specific data really just depends on what you're trying to do with it. Um, in APCSA here, we're only going to go over ArrayList. Um, and that's what this entire unit's about, is the ArrayList. So just know it's part of this collections API. There's a bunch of different things that are part of that collections, but we're only going to go over the ArrayList 
um, in this course. So to use in your program, again, we need an import line. And you've done import lines, we know what it is. Here's our specific import line for importing array list. Okay. Um, this is part of the Java Quick Reference um, in their basically formula sheet for the AP exam. And they say that everything included in the Java Quick Reference is automatically imported, which means don't worry if you don't see this import statement in an AP question. So like in a multiple choice question that uses an array list or even in the free response when you're writing code on the AP exam specifically, don't worry about this import statement we always assume that it's automatically imported. But you will have to include it when you write your code for us in this course. Um, and when you are coding, um, make sure you include it at the top with your other import statements. Okay, now we're gonna get into creating an array list. So uh, what sets array list apart from an array, besides the fact that it overcomes those two big obstacles, is that it must contain objects, not primitive types. So an array could contain objects or primitive types, but an array list can only contain objects. So if you want the array list to store primitive types like integers or doubles, then they have to be what we call boxed and basically placed in their wrapper object classes. And we've gone over those before. Um, I know it's been a while, but integer and double um, would be what we call the wrapper classes, which wrap up primitives so that they behave like objects. Java has a wonderful feature called auto boxing where we don't have to worry about um, converting primitives to their object types or objects to primitives. We don't have to worry about that conversion because we have auto boxing where the compiler will automatically do that for us. Um, and remember, whenever we reference these wrapper classes like the capital I integer or the capital D double, those wrapper classes are just a way to treat primitives like objects. So they still hold primitive data, but then there's this whole list of, me of methods we can use on them um, and make them act like objects. Um, for all cases in this course specifically, you can pretend that ArrayList can hold primitive data. Um, it'll handle the auto boxing and unboxing behind the scenes and you don't have to basically worry about coding that. Um, you would have to worry about it in more advanced programs, um, but we're not gonna get into that in this course here. The only thing that's really gonna change is how we create an array list and then also how we access and modify elements in an array list. We use methods instead of built-in um, operations like we did with arrays. So to review, this is how a regular array was created, right? We had int, if I wanted an array of integers, right? Here's int, I had the two square brackets, they were empty. Then I had my reference variable name equals new int, and then in the again, in the box, um, I say in the box because it looks like a box, but in the square brackets, I had to put the size of my array because the size was determined at creation. An array list is gonna look um, different. We're still gonna use the new operator, so you'll still see that. Um, we still need a reference variable name for an array list, um, but everything else is, is different, okay? So this is what it looks like, okay? A lot going on here. Um, we have array list, so it starts off defining an array list, then we have two angle brackets, Okay, and then in those angle brackets, we specify what the array list is gonna hold. And again, array list can only hold objects. So if we wanted to hold integers, we have to use the integer object class. So that's why it's capital I integer. We still have our reference equals new array list. Okay, and then we have these angle brackets and then we have these empty um, parentheses brackets. Okay, so this is the right way that we create an array list of integer values. What you'll also see inside these angle brackets, um, it is also correct to put um, integer again. Okay, And if I remember correctly, I believe that's what the AP exam does, um, is it copies integer twice, here as well as here. It's technically optional in code uh, because the compiler will um, basically infer 
that we want it in both um, instances, but it's probably better code to include it in integer over here, over here, as well as over here. Okay, these empty bra or empty parentheses here, those are empty. Okay, that's actually code for a default constructor, calling on the default constructor for an array list. Okay, but that is how we create an array list on a single line. Now, what does what does this mean? So the angle brackets are part of the required syntax. Okay, the angle brackets that you see are not optional. They have to be here, and they have to contain the type that it's going to store, and they also have to be here. They can be empty, and you might see code examples where they are empty, but they also can have the data type repeated as well. Okay? There's no size specification. Notice how I made um, an array of 40 integer values up here, but I don't have 40 anywhere in that array list creation. And that's because when you use the default constructor for an array list, it starts off with actually zero elements, no elements. And the array list automatically expands when you add however many elements you want to add. Okay. So this, what you see right here, creates an array list with no elements at all. Um, the element type must be reference, not primitive. Okay, so again, it must be an object. You must have an object of some kind. Even if you want to store primitives, like student grades, you have to have that reference type listed in those angle brackets. Okay. An array list can only hold one type of variable, like an array. You can't mix types. Okay. Cannot mix types. If you want it to hold integers, it'll only hold integers. Okay. Um, and the empty parentheses, again, an empty list is being created. It's the default constructor basically in the array list class. And that's the only way that an array list is going to be created on the AP exam. Okay? They do not use a parameter constructor. But just in case you are curious, it also does have a parameter constructor. It's just not tested on the AP exam. Um, this would be creating an array list using a parameter constructor where we have array list name string equals new array list string. You can see how it's repeated here, okay, which is pretty typical there. Um, but then instead of the empty parentheses here, we say arrays as list. And then this would be creating an array list of three names, Alan, Brian, and Chuck. Okay. But again, that part is not tested on the AP exam. We won't be using the parameter constructor in this class. But just in case you were curious, you could have a parameter constructor too. Okay, let's do some array list creations here um, with integer values called migrades. If you want to pause and try to fill these in, feel free. Um, but let's go ahead and see how these are constructed. So here's integer values called migrades. And array list, again, integer migrades equals new array list, integer open closed parentheses there. Um, and again, the repeated one. Um, is most common on the AP exam, but if you ever see code where it's not listed here, um, that's also technically correct. But moving forward, I'm going to make sure to repeat um, so that it's in the two places there. Double values called sprint times. Okay. You can see here, now we're just using capital D. We're using that double um, wrapper class with uh, string values called names, and then with an object called kid, uh, called my children. Okay, so kid would be an object maybe that I created myself, um, and I want to make an array list holding kid objects. Okay, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Again, that creates those empty lists of whatever types I specify. Okay, um, you initialize an array list in one line, like the examples we just saw. Or you can declare it early in your program and later assign it. Um, that just kind of looks like this. If you do do it on these two lines, you absolutely need to have a repeated um, uh, uh, reference type in those angled brackets. You cannot leave this empty if you do it on two lines. That would be a syntax error, and that would be incorrect. <laughs> 
And then just to finish up here, um, ArrayList R0 index like arrays. So it starts at index zero and it increases by one in value as you move down the list. To access or modify elements, we're gonna use methods, which we'll learn about in the next lesson. And then the last thing here, you use system.out.print, and if you use the ArrayList reference, so like in this case, the ArrayList reference would be students, you it'll call on the ArrayList toString method and nicely print off contents of the ArrayList. So that's another benefit of using an ArrayList is it has a toString method that automatically prints off the contents of the ArrayList. We don't actually have to use a loop to do that. Although we could, and we'll see that, but that's another nice thing, okay? All right, and that brings us to the end here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.